How's it going, everyone? Banana, nice to see you. Good to see you again, bud. Chat, Good how we time. doing? Uh, good, uh, oh, oops, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, that's. I was going <laughs> to say, I, Riley's in chat. He's at his party time job right now. I'm sure that's not meant to be part time or anything, but. <laughs> party time job sounds pretty nice. Party time job. I mean, sounds like a pretty good place for place to be. It does. And uh, so does being here with all of you guys in chat. We appreciate you joining, especially you, JM. So is Kucho clickbait? Don't know yet. <laughs> Gotta find out over the over the summer window. Yep, there you go, Riley. Part time. Well done. Glad you learned how to spell. <laughs> Cucho clickbaiters. No heaven for you guys. <laughs> I know you just rose from the dead, but give us a break, please. I mean, we'll see what what ends up happening. I know he just got back to training today. Thank Jesus, Columbus. That was a quick recovery for Jesus. <laughs> yeah, not Jesus. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good, you know. Eh, it was a try. Okay, th thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Might not be able to hop in stream yard. It's a bit poor. Well, he's at his party time job, so. Yeah, so it should be even more time to hop in, right? Uh, uh, I do have to put the link in the description and everything. So yep. I will be getting that out to you guys right now. There is 25 of you in here now. We are glad you have joined us. I will be putting the link below the Twitter video in the replies, and it will be on the description for the YouTube video. So if you want to come in and talk to us about anything, especially how Cole Palmer is the best player in the Prem right now, uh, feel free. We got that. So it is on Twitter. Let's head over to the YouTube. Ooh, Pendingo with the take. Ganada, your reaction to this? Swap Muriel for Cucho in a heartbeat. Sue me. I don't know. I'm going to hold out a little more faith on Mario for a little bit longer. Um, I gave Kara his fair due. I'm going to give Mario his fair due. And then if he continues to not perform, then yeah, I'm on board with that. But at this moment, I'm going to hold it. That's fair. Uh, I think you kind of got to stick by your guy for a little bit, especially when you know the level that he has played at and that he can play at in this league. Give him a little bit more, a little more time. I know we've said that a lot in the past two to three years, especially with attackers. But yep. this guy is a high level player and you can't just give up on him this quickly. Um, But I will, what I will say about that is if Cucho is available, we do need to be in that conversation. If we're serious about trying to do something in this league, the, the reigning MVP is available you have to be in that that conversation yep so i guess we'll just kind of wait out and see how that relationship goes in in columbus from here mm -hmm. um it seems that wilfred nancy does not want to talk about it at all at the moment so can you even really blame him i wouldn't want to get caught up in no. drama that's just no. unnecessary no not at all Screen right, Jesus this, has a good question for yeah, you. Yeah, I, I was about to take it. This one, that's fully on me. Uh, things have happened. There's been a lot of stuff going on. I haven't had time to sit down and edit them, so that is on me. You can blame me, Jesus. I know you're listening, no matter what. <laughs> but it's on me. Don't blame any of the other guy. Well, no, you can blame Dave. Someone blame the cameraman. <laughs> it's, someone said fire the cameraman. <laughs> I'm for it. So, um, hey, all right, all right. <laughs> no, that's on me. Uh, they should be getting. The ones from Saturday, the ones from last Saturday, like five days ago, should be getting out by this coming Saturday. So we'll see how that goes. They should get out and uh, we'll be here. <coughs> yeah, uh, well, I mean, what you guys can do to help that is join our Patreon or something like that so we can buy another laptop to help with editing. <laughs> Yeah, the, the editing has gone down, which is nice. 
it's but like if i want to get clips out blah, blah, blah. i got all yeah. this stuff to, to help promote the brand and i was doing it for a while and i fully burnt myself out doing all of that um so hopefully it's only three bucks a month something or cash up in the bio buy me a coffee or not bio description on <clears throat> on youtube even a dollar not not saying you have to but it, it it'd be nice you know because yeah, as great. we're as we're soliciting ourselves in the first eight minutes of the live <laughs> we love <Hey>. that <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hear it um Pendingo again says it's not been great for Mario so far, though Kara was a lot worse, to be fair. Tell that to Bryce. That's all I gotta <laughs> say. Tell it to Bryce. Yeah, it's not been great. You just gotta hope that at some point soon we're gonna start to see him. I mean, you could see he's he's having the conversations with the players so that way he can understand them better, they can understand him better, what the what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. It'd be great if we could play him, you know, at that false nine with a competent midfield and let him do some things that that's ideal but right yep. now he's kind of just filling in spots nick no we did not clickbait you we did talk about kucho in the first 10 minutes of the stream sorry bud um jam says at this moment the team is trash so it's hard to judge Muriel. everybody's not great no it's been it's been tough we got to figure out find some form we got to figure some things out it's evident early in the season what worked for us last year wasn't necessarily working to start. So got to try some things. I mean, we didn't have the double pivot last year to start the year. We found it and we found form. So maybe that's us finding them again and them finding form or it's finding something different. But we got to figure it out fast, man. We're, we're digging ourselves a hole. Yeah, there's a whole another conversation to be had. We can go into it if you guys want about Facundo Torres this season. There's <clears throat> something going on. That man cannot find form or the back of the net to save his life. Um, so if you want to talk trash about Muriel, you also have to kind of spread. I don't. I don't want to say the hate. But you got to spread the love. It's not really love across the whole front line because the whole front line, apart from Duncan against Minnesota and the boy, the boy Jack, you can't see it up here. It's a Jack Lynch. Jack Lynn. <laughs> so it like. You got to be fair to everyone across the front line when it comes to wanting more. It's all our attackers, absolutely. Uh, everybody needs to pick up and form. <clears throat> uh, we got Riley over here talking about Leicester to the moon when you had the league in your hands and now you've bottled it to Ipswich and Leeds and now you're in a playoff spot. So good luck with that. Up, up the town, boys. Up the town. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got Shaw in here saying SMH not the real Jesus but it is a stream Jesus and I don't want to hear anything from you negative this stream after you hit yourself in the face at Pickle <laughs> I really don't not the time or place Trev says I figure once Muriel finds the net he won't stop yeah, it's like that's the, the hope that's the hope mm -hmm. It's he he scores and then he can't stop scoring, you know. Well, he's been close, man. He's he's been very close to scoring some very class goals. So it's just a matter of time, in my opinion. He's had a lot of good opportunities from outside the box. Obviously, all those aren't going to go in, but it is nice to have him and Lodero now who are not afraid to shoot outside of the box. We always complain about that. We're not taking enough shots. And now we are, but they're just not finding the back of the net. So at some point, they will find the back of the net, but it's just kind of playing that waiting game of when does it happen? Can it happen? It's it's a thing. It's I, I get what you're saying, but at this point, let's not uh let's not play the the waiting game, you know? Let's figure out what the hell's going on and start and start doing something. We've got a whole bunch of professional athletes quite quality dps at this level like let's let's start doing some things but they're i'm sorry i gotta respectfully disagree there because nba teams can also have bad nights to where, like you just see it they won't fall it'll hit the rim it'll go in and out so like, yeah we so can this, have bad nights 11 in a row though yeah I, agreed <laughs> 11 in a row though that's that's where it is See, this is where I was trying to be positive for once instead of realistic, and it just backfires. Yeah, no, you got to be realistic. I mean, the positivity was over when we went five games without like a 
a real win. Yeah, Drew against Flamengo, Lodero looked great, and then we all got way too excited. <laughs> yep. I mean, reality of the situation, though, is 66% of this league makes the playoffs, so... It's ridiculous. It's not panic time yet, but, I mean, shoot, we could finish ninth in the East and still make the playoffs. Yep. That's that's where we are as a league. <laughs> so, it's by no means over. Like, we're not counting ourselves out. I, I did see something come through in the chat, and I'm skipping a little bit, but SKC last season's prime example. You start the first half of the season absolutely atrocious, find form, and then make the playoffs, you know? Mm -hmm. We saw it the year that NYC won the cup. They just got hot at the right time and went on to win it. So it's the MLS, man. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of ways to win the cup, and it doesn't have to be you being the best team during the regular season. Unfortunately, that's the way that it should be, but it isn't, and that's where we are. So, yeah, if we can sneak in, as like a, even as just as a seven seed, then you do have to go play. Oh, dear Lord, I forgot about the home away home thing. You're going to yeah, go so two games away. Oh, maybe two games away. You got to win the series, though. It's, it's, it's ah, one of those league. things, man. Not exactly sure how I feel about it. Mm, I'm pretty sure how I feel about it. <laughs> <laughs> not, a, not great. Um, I do got to remind you guys. I know we said it like 10 minutes ago, but the StreamYard links now should be in the YouTube description. If you haven't refreshed your page yet, refresh the stream, and then the link will be in the description. You should be able to join. So if you're looking to join, that's how you do it on Twitter. It's just in the replies. Uh, so go ahead and use that link, hop in. And yet again, as I said earlier, talk to us about how Cole Palmer is the best baller in the Prem right now. Okay. It's <laughs> And how shite United is, please. I, I'm happy. So, speak just some MLS drama that's going on, apparently. New England Revolution head coach Caleb Porter in his interview. We're going to win on Saturday, I promise. Charlotte FC co head coach Dean Smith. He shouldn't make promises he might not be able to keep. A little spice going on over there. Dean in that game. Smith. That's and that is something I never thought I'd hear is Caleb Porter and Dean Smith having Dean beef Smith. before a game. <laughs> we got a little only in the MLS. Huh? I said only in the MLS can yeah. that happen. I'm here for it. I didn't realize up until a day or two ago. It left my mind, forgot it happened, that Caleb Porter was a manager of New England. Totally forgot that happened. Just didn't know he was there. Yeah. It, there's a lot of things that happen, and I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it's like, I feel like any time that DC came into town, and it's like, oh, yeah, that's right. Wayne Rooney's on the bench. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Stuff like that that I just didn't pay attention to. Yeah. Um, there, there's, to what else. there's so many transactions that happen in the league. And then there's not enough reporting happening on the league that it is hard to keep up. Bogart does a great job. All the people that work for Apple do a great job because they have to. And then they do, like yeah, they do their job. I wouldn't. Not all they of them do a great it's job. Fair. It's a way to put it. Yeah, you're never working for Apple now. Congratulations. I... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, then it, it comes up to us to stay up until 5 a.m. following the Duncan rumor and then doing research on the Vanky brothers and then uh, getting in with the Blackburn fans. And that's how you end up doing journalism. So it's up to like, yeah. the independent people that aren't getting paid to do the job of real reporters. Yeah, I do. I do want to apologize on uh, my behalf because the Duncan, Muriel, and Brecolo transfers completely burned me out <laughs> mm -hmm. as well. And um, I think I still have my notifications turned off on Twitter since then because <laughs> I just needed to just... It's now that I'm thinking about it, I probably should go turn those back on so that way we can... You should turn them back on and I should turn mine off so I can finally have an upgrade. <laughs> oh. I think we finally turned off so much. I don't know who it was. It might have been me. It might have been you. Someone turned off 
the notifications for the guy out of Norway that we were following with the Brecalo transfer news. Uh-huh. It, it, it was it was him. It was the Blackburn guy. It was Mike Gramajo. It was Austin Date. Like all of the people, just notif- And every time they tweeted, and like half the time, it wouldn't even be about anything that yeah. we cared about. No, like, I, I, oh. The source in the source in Norway was the worst because that deal was so quiet for a long time mm-hmm. that it was just like any time we saw the notification come through, it was like, and then the yeah. hours that you know. The time the time zone differences and all that kind of stuff that we were playing with there like you said you were up until five for the <laughs> duncan potential transfer i was up at five for anything coming out of norway and oh geez it was late night over there in europe yep there was quite literally first second and third shift going on <laughs> yeah. at OG9 TV. and then i we got through like three days of that and then my body was like, what are you doing? And just, I was sick. <laughs> like, my body was like, no, we, this isn't doable. And yeah, it, uh, so that's why, <laughs> that's, that's why the, uh, April Fool's tweet came out at about eight, oh, sorry, not eight, 1130 here. And all the people over in the UK where it was like already four were pissed because <laughs> April Fool's ends at noon. And, uh, yeah, if you still haven't caught on, Duncan has not agreed a fee with Blackburn again. <laughs> He's staying here as of right now. Owen, oh, you don't need to gas him up, all right? <laughs> Thank you, Owen. Forty million for the best player in the in the league. I'll keep it clean because I know you're a child and I can't. Yeah, you know. Um, in the league, you. and name one better this season. KDB maybe, but he hasn't played enough. Stala maybe he was injured. Cole Palmer hasn't been injured. He's played the whole season. He's definitely young player of the season. I'm not saying he hasn't been fantastic for y'all. Foden? He's all right, definitely. Foden's a shout. I was going to say, Foden is definitely a shout there. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say any Arsenal players just because of the fact that we don't have the goals because they're spread so much throughout the team. You know, we've got quite a few players in double digits at this point, so it's just KDB, I feel like, is a shout. Foden's a shout. Um yeah, no, he's been fantastic. Point. That's for sure. Grealish low key fell off. Not, there's just different styles of play. And then Doku came in. I mean, I'd take I'd take Grealish over Sterling about ten times out of ten. So, um, yeah, no, it's he's become a system player. It's not that he's fell off. He's he's just become a system player. He is a is a cog in the machine now. That's that's what that is. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he goes in there and does his job, but Pep's system doesn't make superstars. You know what I mean? Like he's got people in the in his system who are definitely playmakers, but you know, you're gonna buy some of the best players in the world, and they're just gonna go mm-hmm. in there and they're gonna do their job. It's like Thierry Henry tells the story about when he went there for Barcelona, and he didn't make the run two times in that match, and he got pulled out, and Pep was like. You do this when I tell you to do this, or you don't play, you know? Yep. And now he's having his heart broken on Paramount Plus every week with Kate Abdo sitting right next to him. <laughs> Unfortunate. Yeah, buddy's down bad. Pineda, the only thing that I can think of is loud and proud. I think it's Luis. That's Luis, right? Pineda? Yep. That's the so, only one I can think of. He, I think he runs loud and proud, Luis Pineda. So that would be the one you're probably thinking of. And Nick says, Can we please upgrade from Ojeda already? That is another conversation from the thing that I said previously is you got to talk about everyone in the front line. And Ojeda has got his minutes this season, and it just, it still hasn't been good enough. No, it's definitely not been good enough from him. I mean, can we? contribute everything you know all our attackers not performing to the fact that our entire team isn't performing possibly um but these again dps are who we expect to make these differences in these moments and put the team on their back and score goals um Mm -hmm. facuno's looked like a shell of himself i believe dave said on our last episode of the podcast and ojeda is still not making that step we expected a much bigger step um from him in his second year 
and we're not seeing any step to be honest with yep. you no nope, it's a it's a great time to be an orlando city supporter that's uh what i could say but we are six matches into the season and i'm looking at it on my screen right here i will pull it up for you guys uh the stats of our assists and top goal scorers this season you can see dagger dan ojeda rafael santos let's go to the assist first oh my Oh, that's, those are the only three assists in the league this season, according to FootMob. So our top assisters, all three of them are on one. So leading assists, one. And then we go to the goals. Duncan McGuire with two. Jack Lynn with one. Nico, Jack Lynn should also have two. Nico Lodero with one. Nico Lodero is a free kick. Duncan had two against Minnesota. Jack Lynn had his first goal against Austin, I believe. So we're, we're we've literally scored four goals all season in the league, like <laughs> four goals in six games. Not what you want from what could potentially be the most potent front line in the league, but we just haven't seen it. On paper, if paper won the league, we would have won it mm -hmm. in August of last year. Like you're not wrong. Yeah, I mean. You're just kind of looking through all the stats. I know you just pulled them away, but it's just, it's not great. XG per 90, if you scroll down to that, our top XG is uh, Felipe with 0. 0.71. No. And no, no. XG per 90? Oh, per 90. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no. XG is Duncan. XG per 90. I'm it's loading right now. Yeah. There you go. And then we go down to a bunch of half chances. Not even that. Point, point one two XG for Dagger Dan in eighth. That is maybe like it could that could be five chances or five shots. All or let's just say six shots for math. All at point two XG or point oh two. Yep. Sorry, added up to point one two, and it's just it's not good enough when we get into the attack in third. So unfortunately. This is what you suffered through. It is now what I suffer through with both Arsenal and Chelsea mixed mm -hmm. with Orlando City is you get to that final third and then it's just not good enough. And that's it's just where we are right now. Um, Yeah, but I feel like the simple solution was kind of brought up in our chat. And it's the fact that we don't have a cam, a true cam. I mean, Nico is a 10, but... Like, he's 34. And he also hasn't been played in the 10 consistently this season. It's been an 8. It's been outright. It's also been the cam referred to as a 10. So, uh, inconsistency, and that is also a theme that we've seen under Oscar, is no consistent starting 11, especially in certain positions. Uh, and that doesn't lead to anything good, because no consistency, then you can't play. Like, you can't play as well, semi-ish, right? Mm -hmm. Um People would say that's an excuse, but it like it it happens. You get played yep. in different positions so many times, and then you kind of just lose your mojo per se. Yeah, I mean, we brought it up on the podcast. I feel like this next couple of weeks is important for us to establish a starting eleven and to continue with those people. We have everybody should be back after this bye week. Everybody should be healthy. You know, Enrique. We don't know exactly what's going on there but i hope that you know two weeks he should be able to be back in the team um and let's go you know what i mean like let's run with what we got let's see what, what what's going on you know we we saw the double pivot early in the season with breckelow only one time you know we we felt like that was going to be a focal point of this this year is the dominant midfielders along with a dominant center back pairing again you know Yep. We instead of seeing Schlegel play more minutes in the MLS than Reckler. Yeah. So this next couple of weeks we need to we need to see our our starting eleven out there and we need to we need to go, you know? Yeah. And I think it, okay. it go ahead. No, I was cutting you off, go. I was gonna say, I mean, Owen brought it up in the chat. I think it is time that we try that four two three one again 
um, now that we have our midfielders healthy. You're not incorrect. Now, who is incorrect is Owen. You're a melt. Uh, and Nick for agreeing with this is also a melt. Um, and that being said, we're going to get away from chat because y'all are being melts and we're going to let David in here to talk. How's it going, David? What's happening, guys? Zach, What's Zach? up, David? Not much, brother. Um, join, uh, I join you guys 22 minutes into it. Um, I have to say that the uh, the bye week, uh, it's definitely going to help us out because we need, we need a lot of soul searching, a lot of rest, a lot of finding out what we want to do. Um, I said that uh, winning is conceiving in the training pitch and pouring the heart of the players. And this past week, I've been saying um, that we can scream till our or chant till our vocal cords break uh, or clap or jump like 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 chimps on the terraces, and that's not gonna make the players win if they don't believe they can. Um, I still believe that Oscar needs the whole season. I don't see anything productive uh, getting rid of him in the summer. Um, also, um, May, June, July, well, actually, April, May, June, it's going to determine what's going to happen in the postseason. We are heavy on games in June and May, uh, and uh, we definitely need to get at least 50% of those points to say we're making playoffs. And um, what we saw against... Uh, Red Bulls was was not encouraging because if you guys look at the highlights, Red Bulls had a lot of opportunities they just simply did not put away. So we were very fortunate um, that they basically got complacent, looked at the clock, said there's no way we're going to lose this game two minutes till the 90th, and they got punished. That's on them. Um, so it, it, the result was more on their decisions more than than ours i like the, the attitude of like let's not go up a strike make things happen um but in the end you could argue that the penalty was a decision that was the wrong one but you know that's that's what happens that's why when i say football is a pound of talent and an ounce of luck that's what i'm referring to the bad decision refereeing decisions which i was going to happen the bounce of the ball at Bad decision from a player in seconds, you know, create those situations. Um, like you guys, my overseas teams are disappointing at the time. So I can find refuge on that. You know, usually that's the advantage of supporting more than one team. When one is doing bad, you know, you find solace, you find refuge in the other fan base. And hey, I'm going to take you one point. year. I'm going to take my one year of being able to enjoy Arsenal's. <laughs> no, I understand, brother. And I, trust me, trust me. I, I know what's going on. Uh, English football is it's on its final weeks. And uh, so that, that makes it more painful if the hole that we are left is a very bad Orlando City in the summer. Because while we skipped the summer of sadness last year, may come back twice as potent this year. Um, and... Um, so, so for that, you know, I, uh, you know, let's, like, like always, let's support the boys. Let's hope they can turn around. Last year definitely we did, but uh, we're in a worse condition than we were last year. Six point, uh, I'm sorry, uh, four points, six games, one win. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking. It really is because we. This is the worst we ever done with Oscar, and the worst we have done since 2019. So while football is peaks and valleys and some seasons happen to be like this, I think that as a fan base, we had such bad five years of football before Oscar got here that to me, we have to make five years of playoffs and then we may have to play, you know, then we can miss them, you know, we still have to make up for ground for, for that. Um, I don't know if you guys have touched it, but I know that the ILF has posted their decision have you guys talked about it? I don't know if you did before I came on. Uh, I not. feel like we haven't, but at the same time, it's the stance is kind of known just through the podcast. We haven't explicitly said it, but yeah, we do not support the League's Cup uh, or uh, I, anything of that nature. 
I'm glad. So I will be brief since you guys already touched it. Um, you know, uh, on, on, on our show on the Capital uh, Stand podcast, we, from two weeks ago, we made that decision. And I want to say this because, uh, you know, I support the ILF's decision. If Rutgers wants to join on that decision, they're more than welcome. I don't question the loyalty of support groups or their leadership when it comes to this. They have never questioned mine, even when we have disagreed on topics and we have found uh, ourselves on different sides of an argument. Um, and that's how it should be. At the end of the day, we win as one, we lose as one. We're one fan base. And, you know, bashing the colors above all else. That's how it always should be. Um, and I have to say this. Our national trophy needs to be revered. There's, you're not ever going to find a single English man or woman who supports football who is going to say, yeah, let's ditch the FA in favor of some made-up trophy. Never, 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 never. Every country that has a national, basically every country that has a national trophy understands that the prestige of that trophy goes beyond money, goes beyond anything else. It's, it's, it's about the culture and the growth of the game. You probably guys have seen uh, uh, the video that, I don't know if you haven't, uh, by Tactical Manager, that, that channel on YouTube, mm -hmm. that explains the situation beautifully. Uh, it's on the fence. It's not taking sides. It's just explaining the situation from a business standpoint on why MLS wants to do the things they want to do. It was revealed on that that MLS wants to create a league to, uh, a second division league. So basically what they're doing is they're trying to bypass usl and muscle them out out of business how is that working for the for the american football scene to me it makes no sense rather than mm -hmm. working together just like epl and the efl do in england mm -hmm. uh rather than doing that they basically just wants to destroy usl usl is where we were born and i have a lot of respect for the league i i do watch usl league one usl championship games Lick to when I can find them. And USL serves a purpose. It goes into communities where MLS has no interest or markets are too small to be profitable, to be uh, MLS uh, markets. Yeah. I just think that that is, that is in bad faith, not what we stand for. The American uh, football fan needs to stand for, to protect our federation, uh, everything that follows talent over national team and also growth for the sport. I have always said that as a football fanatic in this country, you're part fan, supporter, or you're also like like a, 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 a preacher of the sport, a missionary of the sport, trying to bring mm -hmm. people to, to join the cause and introduce the game to people. And I finished with this. Um, I, on social media, I had to, to explain to people that uh, the decision of not going to the to the games and not going to um, uh, not watching and emailing your season ticket uh, holder uh, rep if you have one, letting them know where your stands so they know that when the stands are empty that it is for a reason. And a lot of people say, "Well, I want to support the boys, and I, if I don't show up, I don't want them to feel like we are against them." The fact of the matter is the players and uh, Oscar and his staff have already been told the decisions that the, the, the ILF Rockets if they join us and uh, and um, the some of the I don't want to say the majority because I don't know uh, you know as an exact science but when they go there and they see that not everybody's there they understand what why are we doing it they don't I've been told they understand it and they don't take any offense by it they are signed to the league so contractually they can't say anything against what against the league because their employers who signs the checks you're never gonna get that from the apple plus um announcers you're not gonna get that from the club employees everybody has to tell the corporate line independently of their feelings so with that said i would like to encourage anybody that is on the fence to educate themselves about the, the subject and understand that this is a decision against the league and their leadership. The football belongs to us. We have the power. Our mm -hmm. wallets 
speak loud. If we stop buying merch, we stop attending games, we stop watching on TV, they got nothing. And to steal the words from Jared Dillon, they understand they are not here saving lives. This is discretionary spending. It's entertainment. If you have to choose between paying your rent, buying food, buying medicine, and going to Orlando City Games, Orlando City Games are going to lose every single time. With that said, I would like for people, if they want to join us, you are doing good. You're standing for American football. You're standing for our national uh, championship. If you do not, that's perfectly okay. You have your reasons. I just don't want people in the fan base to get in between this. I'm a, a true fan. I've been told that. Oh, I'm a true fan since 2011. But, dude, I've been since 2011. I am the poster child for Orlando City fandom. I spent too much money on football, uh, <laughs> you know, between my two teams. I was, uh, uh, my wife was cleaning our our um, uh, closet, and, and half the closet is, is soccer jerseys that I wear. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, uh, I, and, and, and today, uh, a former employee of the club uh, put out a bunch of me signed memorabilia. And you know what? Instead of saving my money, I'm like, hey, man, what you got there? You know? So <laughs> yeah. with that with that said, I, I, I'm sorry I'm taking so long, guys. But uh, with that said, I think um, at the end of the day, if you choose not to support the boycott, what is, in the, in, is going to end up happening is, is that you're approving what the league is doing. And in the future, when they keep taking, 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 taking away from you, then you can't say, well, nobody told us anything. FIFA mm -hmm. is going to step in. You cannot do that. It's illegal. It's against, against the FIFA charter. You cannot, as a Division One sanctioned FIFA league, refuse to play in the national game, in the national championship. I know that they're sending this token delegation as a way of getting uh, trying to get away with it. I'm telling you right now. It's it's not yeah. supposed to be that way. So I hope that, I hope that people can understand that... The, at some point, you have to stand for something, defend uh, our sport, defend uh, our culture, and that goes beyond Orlando City. I know that other teams, other supporter groups, other fan bases are going to be doing the same, and I appreciate mm -hmm. that because at the end of the day, we have to stand together as one. Otherwise, the bad guys win. Because that's all it takes for the bad guys to win, when good people stand to the side and do nothing. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. All right, See you, David. All right. Well, David was bringing up some very, very good points, good conversation to have. I just got to address what's going on in chat. Cran. Oh, yeah. Cran. Cran. Cran it's because you Cran. roasted them. So they're, they're, uh, yeah, it goes all the way back, all the way up to here. <laughs> Johnny joins and says, he just disrespected the chat. Without us, there's no fans. Tell that Facts. to Don Garber, mate. <laughs> no, I mean, David brings up a good point, though, about the power being in the hands of the fans. And we see protest work everywhere else in the world. Um, it can work here. Everybody just needs to get out of that mindset that, you know, it's America. It's not going to work here because they're. this is our sport. You know, this is not the, the owner's sport. So as the power is in the numbers and it's the power, the power is in people banding together from across the league, you know? Yeah. There's certainly matches to where the, the cost for that stadium to be operated, paying the players, the teams that travel, the flight there, the bus there, whatever it is, eventually that cost is going to outweigh what the fans put in because the only way they make money, make money is merch sales, TV rights, and ticket sales yep so it's literally all up to us except for, except for the tv sales part espn apple fox can do whatever they want but also they are not going to pay the same amount of money to the league if they are not getting the viewership numbers so not, take it that yeah. what you will well and it, it also is going to be a worse product without fans in the stands you know what i mean mm -hmm. absolutely like you're not you're not going to get that pop that you get when the home team scores a goal across any game. Like when there's 600 people in the stands, you're not going to get that. Yeah, it'll go back to the COVID days where it's the piped in noise and it's always two seconds too late after the team scores a goal. And then you got the, uh, oh, the what? Oh, those were the days though, weren't they? <laughs> watching all of us watching in the house together, that was fantastic. Yeah. Um, those, 
those were good days. I mean, the pop was created in the living room of the house. That's for oh, sure. 100%. You got the disco light going in there. Yeah. <laughs> and Nani scores the pen, winning against LAFC, running around. Oh, yeah. Fantastic days. Um, Owen, it's just another instance where you're wrong. I'm sorry. It's you're crayon. really standing on this, huh? You're just. It's cray- I've said crayons my whole life. I'm standing by it. Crayons? No. Incorrect. You are wrong. Jesus. Uh, HR uh, has joined the chat. How's it going? So Chelsea, huh? So Villa, huh? <laughs> All right. That's uncalled for. <laughs> we score four goals in a day. You concede four in a day. How's that? Honestly, though, Tyler, I needed y'all to do something. <laughs> you, I semi can't, thought, go ahead sorry i was gonna say i can't have city breathing down my neck like this for another 10 weeks like give us a little breathing space here my guy and i semi thought villa had a chance when john duran put that goal in and then foden just said nah fuck that <laughs> uh three points are in the bag yeah, foden scores against small teams I have I had Foden in my FPL team and Palmer in my FPL team, and I had Palmer vice captain, so he had me forty, and then I didn't have any captain on on Foden, and he got me twenty. So sixty points between the two of them was kind of nice. So we have backups all over the place, brother. You're playing City. Y- y'all need to have your best team out there. Come on, they now. Did. I don't care <laughs> if they're hurt. I'd, okay, you can say that. <laughs> I don't care what kind of injuries you have. I need 12 goals from you that game, man. Owen says, well, back to reality for a second. Does anyone know other supporter groups or clubs that are opting out of league games? I have League Cup games. Sorry, not League games. That would be shit. Um, I have no clue, to be honest with you. I think maybe Kanan is doing a little bit of research on that right now, maybe. Yeah, give me know. like 30 seconds. Because I did see that we got a lot of support. We being Orlando City for, well, not just Orlando City, specifically the ILF. Yeah. Um, for coming to that decision. Nick, you're back on my good side. Shit talking Fort Lauderdale. Actually, no, you're semi back on my good side because you called them the M word, but it's actually the FTL word. Get it right next time. MLS is back tournament days. What were you like? This kid had to be like what seven when these games happen. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> he disrespected. Oh, Owen. I mean, is that he disrespecting Owen really isn't a crime, is it? It can be. Back, Johnny said, "Back to the protest," and no one has said the word since. It's all been more than one word. Congratulations on your protests. Uh, oh, and incorrect. You are so well. Actually, Cole Palmer is welcome. I I texted the lads after the game, and I was I was shit talking because it's what you do. But like, I mean, you got to take your five seconds of being able uh, to do it. I get it. Exactly. You can't do it a lot, so you got to do it when you can. I was so I told him before stream started. I was so down and out. Like I was. The most depressed I had been after watching Chelsea in a while. And then the pen happened. And then no one decided to step out on Cole Palmer on the corner. And then McTominay, as he does, is the best goal scoring midfielder in the world. So he puts that in the back of the net for us. And uh, I am having a great night. Yeah, I mean, that's great and all. But y'all are still <laughs> hanging around there in the, in the I, tenth I, I do have the power to mute you or remove you from the stage, so... I'm not trying to ruin your night or anything, but I do think it's hilarious. It's like I said in Snapchat, y'all win, it's 10. Y'all lose, it's 10. You draw, it's 10. Again, again. If we lost, it would have been 12th, because that's where we were. Respect. <laughs> we'll talk about the... You put the title race in the in the, in the the uh, description. We've talked about 10th place race for... <laughs> more of this game. Yeah, that is more ex- no, I can't even lie. You, you can't. In previous years with Man City, it's been more exciting, but not this year. All right, we're back to Cray NFC. 
Orlando Crane Soccer Club. Um, at least I need a farmer league. It, Talking about the Prem. It depends on how you view it, man. I don't, it's a it's a it's a league that's for sure yeah i mean there's definitely more parity in this league than say the bundesliga bundesliga league oh. but at the same time like outside of leicester in recent history name somebody outside of the big six that's won a trophy uh, that, and that is the the point is you can have anyone except for Tottenham from the big six go and win that league. It, it could be you guys, albeit it's been over 20 years, I think. No offense. Uh, uh, it, could be, it could be Liverpool. It could be City. It could be us. It could have been United, although it's also been a decent amount of years since United last won it. Um, Villa, 82. There you go. Wow, congratulations. That's before everybody in chat was born. Maybe. Everybody in chat. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, it's not a farmer league in that respect, but it is a big, like, there's the favorite five, not counting yeah. Spurs, that should go on and win it every year. But then, yeah, we have had the Leicester year where they just came out of nowhere and uh, did just about everything. Which is great, you know. I mean, that's why people do enjoy the MLS because of the fact of, you know, there there is so much that could happen with winning the trophy. Um, but yeah, it's not a farmer's league. I just, like I said, it just kind of depends on how you look at it because if you're mm -hmm. outside of the big six, you look at it as like, we'll never, you know, are we ever really going to ever win this trophy? The best no. thing is like bright, bright and celebrated making champions league spots. Like they want a trophy and that's, you know, that's a huge, were they champions? They're Europa League. No, they were Europa League. I'm sorry. I think they're Europe. Right. Yeah. I, still, that's the first time they've ever gotten European football. Europe. So yeah. it's a big, big thing for them. And then you do have, even in Serie A this year, you have Thiago Mata taking Bologna into the fourth mm -hmm. spot of Serie A. So like, there are still things that happen in other leagues. You just got to pay attention to it, I would say. What do we got? Oh, why did I open Owens chat? I think it's competitive, just not with a variety of clubs. A farmer's league with a few clubs, yeah. Says the 12-year-old that started supporting Man City when they were great. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Castle made the Champions League, so there's angles to it. Congratulations. You know the last two years of football. It, uh, at least it's not... It is league. Oh, I am French when I say the numbers. Other than that, <laughs> league. Oh. What are we doing here? <laughs> Man, you just get hate for no reason sometimes. Well, I mean, I will say it's not unprovoked, actually. You've been you've been kind of going at Owen all night. When do I not, though? That's the thing. I can drive. <laughs> all right, buddy. I Stop stealing my lines, huh? Listen to the podcast too much. All right, buddy. I can be spicy when Chelsea win. And I don't have to worry about Orlando on the weekend. I, and then we play Sheffield on Sunday, I think. No. Yes, I think we play Sheffield on Sunday. It could be, it could finally be a good like four days of football yeah, for me. It could be a, it could be a huge week for you guys. You could go as high as. Depending seventh. on who else plays. I, I'm if telling you, else, European spots. If nobody, if nobody else wins. I think we have the possibility of. Europa League in sixth. The Conference League. No, isn't I think is Europa not five and six, and the Conference League is seven. It's five. And then okay, it's, maybe not. Yeah, that's not happening. No, I mean, fifth place is on fifty-seven points. So no, that's not happening. So six. It, it is Spurs though. The other chance for Europa League football for us is the FA Cup, although we drew City in the semifinal, which is tough. But you got, you're probably going to have to play him anyway. And then United got away with drawing Coventry. Um, 
I'm not sure. Miss talking football with the boys of Mario Kart night happen. It has not yet. Mm, possibility of this weekend. We'll see. We'll keep you all posted. But it's it's happening soon. Um, we finally have enough controllers for everybody to be able to play properly. We've got the consoles figured out. So, yeah, it, everybody just has to be in the same spot and to have everybody in the same spot and be able to show up. We get it maybe once a week, not even once a week with a podcast. So it's tough just to get everybody in the same spot um, and be able to do it. So like Kanata said, maybe on the weekend because there's no game. Maybe we do it when all the other MLS games are going on and we got MLS 360 going up and then us playing Mario Kart and we can see what will happen. But mm, you never know. Maybe next Thursday. We'll keep you all posted for sure. It's going to happen. And then we've got a potentially a couple more games lined up outside of Mario Kart that will run on stream. No, don't even know what you're on about, but no. Not, kind of. Yeah, but we shouldn't be um we shouldn't be in cruise control. It's this is the point in the year where you got to turn it up because Manchester City will always finish out the last 10 games of the year strong. Liverpool's ahead of us by two points. So, you know, you can't rely on them to drop points. We have to pick up all the points we can, score all the goals we can. I mean, I say it to you guys, but that goal differential is an extra point at the end of the day. You know, when you've got a 48 goal differential, it, at the end of the day, that could be huge. Yeah, imagine having a plus forty-eight goal differential. <laughs> I don't have to; I just live it. Uh, yeah, great. EPL might get. Uh, I think no, it's actually going to. It should go to Syria or Bundes. It's either Syria or Bundesliga that's getting it because of that whole that whole new format is something. It's. It's Syria or Bundesliga because of the like the European contingents and who's still in, um, is what I've heard. So I don't. I think the English side has pretty much been thrown out, and it should be one of the two. I just can't remember which one it is. Um, Owen says, "Is anyone actually doing the MLS fantasy?" Honestly, Probably I not. forgot that it existed, and it's pinned on our Twitter. <laughs> so eh, we're here. <laughs> Stream Jesus says, can we just go back to taking penalties like the MLS did back in the day? Thanks, John Garbaggio. Oh, from the 50? <laughs> like from the midway line, oh. just charging up the pitch? You know, like it's, <laughs> an, NHL, like it's an NHL shootout? <laughs> I Honestly? At this point, why not? I mean, <laughs> we've got right. a clown show in, in South Florida. We've got us here in Orlando. I mean, the team out, the playoffs. team out in Seattle hasn't won a game all year. No. I mean, or them. Yeah. I'm I'm not going to say no, but you got to talk to the big Don upstairs. And unfortunately, he's lost half his brain. So we'll see. Yeah. When's the That's on Dave. Be career low sponsorship, 100% on Dave. That's, That's on Dave. Dave. He's got to get that done. He's got to get that done. Speak on the Circle K Orlando City. Uh, the most random thing that's ever happened possibly in the history of Orlando City. They should have renamed Gate B to Gate K. Or it should have been Gate E. Like the, the one that no one goes in and it should have been Gate K. And that would have made sense. Gate Circle K. Gate Circle K, yeah. But again, no one goes in that gate so no one would probably see it and then the money would go down and they wanted the most money. So... But if you want to hire OC Fan TV for marketing specialists, we're right here. Real Madrid to win number 15. You know what's great is the fact that either one of you or City are going to be out of this tournament after y'all play each other. So this I'm is the okay with that. Yeah. Go ahead and take care <laughs> of each other. I'll just hope that we pull through against Bayern and then we'll see what happens from there. 10 2, mate. 10 2. Hey, it's it's definitely in my memory, all right? So that's why I'm not saying too much. We are definitely a better team than we were then. 
currently. Um, but we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Yep. I cannot wait to cancel my Paramount Plus after the Champions League so I can then get ad-free YouTube for once. That'll be nice. Actually, I was thinking about that last night. Once the Champions League comes back, though, I feel like I'm just going to end up renewing Paramount Plus because I'll be so used to having no ads on YouTube. And then I'll end up paying double. And then the streaming services just take over your life. And that's where I'm at. I feel you. Stream Jesus again saying free game day glizzy when OC wins except no wins, no glizzy. Best uh best deal that Circle K's had. <laughs> I will pass on ever taking I I can't say that word again. I will pass on taking a free hot dog <laughs> from Circle K. Even if it's if they paid me to eat it, I'd still be like, no, we're good. I'll pass. And here we are never getting a Circle K sponsorship. I was gonna say you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. Like doing construction, man, like those taquito taquitos and all those roller grill items come in clutch sometimes. Uh, I can't get myself to even think I sit there and I'm like, those have been there since open, haven't they? And it's like eight PM. Like there I mm, you see, but that's when when there's a lot of construction workers around and the job site has nothing around it, you know it's fresh because they gotta keep restocking it because <laughs> everybody just goes in there and keeps so then without doxing ourselves the one by where we record there's uh-huh. no way those things or the pizza has been changed oh, since yeah. like three days ago you gotta, so you gotta know you gotta know exactly that, and that's the that's basically the only one that i go into so i i can't get myself to even think about it you know what it fired from hr <laughs> you need to get I... hr for your life I veto that because he he understands. Uh, Back to football talk. Rafael Leao or Cole Palmer? Cole Palmer. Yeah. I mean, Leao's kind of been stupid this year. I'm not going to lie. Been selfish. And obviously, as a a playmaker, you got to be selfish sometimes. But you also have to understand when you don't have the best opportunity – um, and somebody else does see that a lot from like Leandro Trossard at Arsenal. Um, they both do the same thing. They get inside the box and it's tunnel vision. It's just, I'm shooting on goal. It doesn't matter what happens. Meanwhile, you know, Gabriel Jesus is running back post. Christian Pulisic is wide open back post and we're being a little selfish. So Cole Palmer has been fantastic for Chelsea this year. I mean, unfortunately, he can't pull them out of their ruins, but he's been fantastic. If there was a player to pull us out of our ruins, it would be uh, Cole Palmer. But he hasn't been able to do it. So really, is there anyone to pull us out of our ruins? I mean, you guys are trying to buy... Who's the striker you guys want? Aussieman. Yeah. Good luck. Uh, so I'm pulling up. Really? I type in Palmer and Col- Eric Palmer Brown pops up before. Really? <laughs> Wait, Col- Cole Palmer doesn't. Are we really doing this right now? I'm trying to pull up stack comparison so Owen can see how stupid that question was. Um, in the meantime, I don't know which Zach this is. Okay, it's for you. Oh, shit. So I got to answer this while I'm trying to do this? Great. Um, would Pulisic make it into the Chelsea starting 11 if you didn't sell him? Yes. Sorry. If he could stay healthy, good. yes. No, I agree. Um, Modric's stayed healthy, but his form has been not great. Sterling is just ass. So on that left side, is him. It's Pulisic, Jackson, or Modric. Um, and depending on injury or form, it would be Pulisic or Modric. And I think I'd have to go after everything that I've seen from Pulisic in a Chelsea kit and everything that I've seen from Mudrick in a or in a Chelsea kit. It's not even, especially with the number of matches or minutes played. But I, I think I would have to go Pulisic. I'd have to agree with you there. Um, I don't watch a lot of y'all, but 
um i just from watching pulisic in milan and seeing him flourish over there and knowing what you know what kind of quality he has absolutely <laughs> there's he's been given a full chance over in Milan, as to where here he was never given a full fledged chance due to injury and just selection being played at wing back. Yep. So, different scenarios. If he wouldn't be given a chance over here, I still think he would be here. We probably wouldn't have bought Mudrik. We might not. Well, we, we might have bought Mudrik, to be honest, just because of age and potential. We definitely wouldn't have gotten Sterling, uh, Nico Jackson, who knows. But yeah, there was the potential for him to be here long term and kind of be that guy for us out on the left. But Obviously, that didn't happen. Sidebar, real quick, since Johnny's in here and we're talking about Madrid. I need you to call your people up at Madrid um, and make sure that you get the Mbappe deal actually done this time because we'll take Rodrigo over at Arsenal. Gladly. Mm, what if What if it was... I think, I think it could be Vinny Mbappe, Rodrigo. Because Jose Lu is not it for them long term. He might be there on loan, and it could just be a full front three of them. What about Fetty? Slot him back in the midfield. Yeah. And then I don't got... watch enough of to really know what's going on. All I know is that uh, uh, we will gladly take Rodrigo over at Arsenal. I think their midfield, unless I'm missing someone, well, Cruz just signed a new one year deal, but he, he doesn't have to play a rematch. So it could be Chao Many. Uh, Kamavinga and Valverde in the midfield. And who knows what's going on with Modric. And then the front line would be Vinny, Mbappe, Rodrigo, which would be like that's winning the Champions League every single year. I love this debate that's going on right now where Johnny said 4-1 four, uh, against yeah, like aggregate. And then Owen says, we're not parking the bus against Madrid. And it's like, no, you're not. They're parking the bus against you and then breaking every time you give up the ball. And then scoring. Yep. <laughs> like Johnny said, right. Okay, run over by the fuss. <laughs> and then Owen comes back with, we'll see, buddy. He really has been listening to you too much on the podcast. I'm trying to tell you. No, what was it? It was Leal versus Pulisic. Palmer. No, Palmer. Or, uh, Palmer, sorry. Um, so I saw Tyler's chat come through and i think we should talk about oh, it really no i meant to do it yeah this one yep there it is right at the bottom <laughs> repost in chat thank you bud oh. realistic top eight in the epl you want to go first or you want me to go first uh well you go first because my chat decided to break ah cool um oh I just have to check something real quick. Um, is there a stack comparison? Can we get... Huh. This. You just got to pull up the table. Uh, yeah, I was pulling up the table and I'm checking one more thing. I'll pull up the table for chat to see and then we can uh, go from there. Okay. I'll just I'll do it here and then you can pull up your thing. Um, I'm going to go Liverpool 1, Arsenal 2, City 3. Um, I don't know if it's, at this point it's Liverpool's title race to lose. And they don't have a ton of challenging, super challenging fixtures left to play. Um, so it's just on them to get it done. Then I will go... Spurs four. Oh. Yeah. United fifth. Villa six. Uh and then Newcastle edging in eight. I th okay. I gotta ask, where do you have us finishing? <sighs> Let me look at your fixtures yet you to play, sorry. I know y'all play us, but I think you also just gotta HR to unsubscribe. 
off of this comment alone. I had him in the top eight, didn't I? Yeah, but I think he's aiming for Champions League spot. All right, so what's your injury situation? Because that swayed my answer as soon as you said that you played backups against City. So if he can come through and answer that. All right, while we're waiting for that, I'm going to go through with mine. Um, go in the same thing, Liverpool won. I They could bottle it, they could not. All, all of the top three right now, Liverpool, Arsenal, City, are on the same amount of matches played. And for that reason, I am putting City 2 and then Arsenal 3. I just think after seeing you guys bottle the title last year, I need to see something fully change before I can trust you guys to not bottle something again. So as of right now, I just got to keep going with the bottling. Uh, to keep HR subscribed, I'm going Villa 4. And then, I don't know. It's got to be Spurs 5 then. And then we'll go... I think we'll go West Ham 6, United 7, Chelsea 8. I think yeah. West Ham does have a game more played than United right now, but United also has to play Liverpool on Sunday. And Liverpool needs to win that match. United also does need to win that match, but Liverpool is just a much, much better squad than United right now. No questions asked. Yeah, but uh, that's always a game. You know what I mean? When the two of them play. So, uh, it didn't look great today no no one in our game today looked good except for Cole Palmer and Garnacho oh, I'm even um, talking about Liverpool oh well, yeah like well like we said when we were when we were together earlier you will have those games where you kind of slip up but they were they slipped up and then they realized oh shit we gotta win this so they were good enough to go and fix the problem that they made for themselves and I mean that is what a title winning team does so you got to deal with that. Yeah, I mean, we definitely have the most difficult run-in out of everybody. Because um, we play Brighton on the 6th. Then we'll play uh, Bayern on the 9th. Then Villa on the 14th. Bayern again on the 17th. And then we get a break with Wolves on the 20th. And then right after that, three days later, we play Chelsea. And then we play Spurs. And then depending on Champions League, we will have those matches in between Spurs and United. So we definitely have the most difficult run in. Um, a lot of important games left to be played. So uh, It'll be, I, I like the three-team title race. I wish that we could be involved in it, obviously, but that's just not going to happen. Uh, so as of right now, I'm going to sit back, hope for European football, and then see where it kind of takes us for the rest of the season because I can sit back and watch the title race without really having to be bothered about Stress. it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it'll be nice. Um, I like Chelsea 8, though. I hate that I have to agree with you and be happy with that, but, <laughs> but I'm behind It's I realistic. Yeah. Yeah. As a Man City fan, I just don't see how we catch Liverpool from three points behind. Uh, it's called they lose a game and then you win a game. I was going to say, as a City fan, you should absolutely understand how you catch a team from three points behind. You guys do it just about every year. It is the goal differential thing too, but it's only by four. Um, I don't know what the head-to-head -head is from you guys, but you guys could easily go and let's see. Let's look at Man City's fixtures for the rest of the season. Uh, you could win by two against Palace. You could smack up Luton, and there's like a, there, that could be plus four on your goal differential right there. Uh, Tottenham postponed. FA Cup doesn't matter. Brighton could be close. And then you got Forest, who you could smack up. You got Wolves, who you could smack up. Fulham might be a little bit tougher. West Ham might be a little bit tougher. So you have room to fix the goal differential. It's just hoping the Liverpool slip up at that point. Stop lying. <laughs> yeah, 
Uh, that's why Arsenal will be third. Because yeah, the all right. <laughs> it's not a bottle this year. Last year was absolutely atrocious, and there's no way around that. Um, young team that didn't have the composure to finish it out. So it was definitely an unfortunate situation. But I mean, we're we're in the middle of this. We've played very well this year, so. I have confidence that we could win out every single game for the rest of the year. Um, but is it likely? No. So that's where the struggle is with us at this current moment. We we need a goal scorer. If we had a true nine, I would be no worries. Instead of a nine that likes to not score goals. He likes to assist more than he likes to score. And then not score. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, Johnny, I'm sorry. I fully forgot that you were in here. I was too busy looking at the table, but I will be happy to get you back in here. But I did see the kit that you were wearing earlier, and I just want you to show it off to Owen for a second. So if you'd like to turn your camera back on, there we go. That's what I like to see. Welcome in the one, the only Johnny Rinder. Oh. Uh, just, uh, just making sure we know what's what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, he said he, he had to put the... City. He had to put the, the FIFA badge up there real quick. Just a little brush Got off. Got it. Right here. Sorry. This is too <laughs> retard just went the wrong way. Been at the camera. <laughs> I mean, this at the it. same time, though, that other badge is synonymous with that gold uh, badge. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, so, this it is, works this either is, way. This is one of my favorite kits because uh, this is the kit I bought when I was uh, in Spain. So, when I, when I actually went to the Bernabeu, this was the kit. And I put Modric on it. Uh, I, I always it. do it uh, in case they retire. I did it with Ramos before he uh, went over to Sevilla. Uh, so I, it's just something I always do. But anyway, so I, I was I actually was I was watching along with uh, what you would go on with the Premier League and stuff, and I, I, I'm right there with you. It's yeah, honestly, man. It looks like if Liverpool, I, I feel like Liverpool's just got a better fixture. Compared to Arsenal, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, but you know, Liverpool, Liverpool can do a Liverpool and completely collapse. But then you can say the same thing about Arsenal. But I, I, mm-hmm. I don't see Manchester City. Um, oh, Manchester City's got sixty-seven points. I don't know why I thought it was on something else. That's gonna be tough. That's a tough three for, three person race. Yeah, it's a it's going to come down to the wire for sure between those three teams. It's who it's who slips up. So, I I, I still I'm looking at it now. I definitely still think Liverpool have it easy only because they're in Europa, only because you got Arsenal and uh, Man City in the Champions League. So it's going to go through to death. But yep, you know I think if Arsenal you know puts their heads together and like digs deep. Because I feel like they're gonna want it more after what happened last year. I think I think they'll take it. Uh if I had to pick up the three. Um, but I know I know you want Arsenal. Yeah. So for me, it's like if we go through this next round in the Champions League, yeah, that has to be our priority. So just, okay. And, go ahead. I was gonna say it just maybe because of the fact that we've gone so long without a European trophy and that, you know, this is already, you know, one of the furthest times we've been in the tournament. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like I said, with the two favorites to win it playing each other right now, yeah, this is a year you want to try to go all in. So uh, are, are, are you, so this is a gamble because everything's a gamble. Are you willing to potentially sacrifice the league and hope to get the finals? But are right. you okay that if they try to go as far as they can and they lose both in potential? That's the, I, yeah, that's the thing that we have to live with. You know, it's, yeah. it's a tough question. I mean, for me personally, I feel like I kind of already hinted at it. I don't think we can win the league this year relying okay. on uh, somebody else to mess up. You know, yeah. we're going to have to rely on Liverpool to lose like, two games that they should win. Yeah, that. So, for me, it's like it's kind of Champions League or bust at this moment. All right. So let's let's say you you finally beat Bayern after all these years of of, of just horrendousness. 
I mean, you got. I, I think you guys could be Bayern. I mean, they, yeah. they just they don't. They're not the same team. Uh, it's it's uh, Tuchel. It's just it's just not it's not clicking. I won't uh, take any. I will not be hearing any Tuchel slander. <laughs> uh, and, uh, I, no, I actually I actually don't mind him. I think he's a decent coach. I don't think he's good for Bayern. I think his tactics and his mindset is a little bit different. Uh, I think he actually probably belongs in like a Serie A team. Mm-hmm. over uh an english or a spanish or a german uh it's just he's a tactician and that's really where you know the italian leagues really is yeah okay so you beat all right so let's say you beat Bayern. out of everyone that's left inside let's you know we're not going to know who but let's say you beat Bayern. who do you want next oh i mean i want city next i don't want to play y'all we city hasn't beaten us this year. Well, city's um, not going to be an option because yeah. we're going to beat them. <laughs> <laughs> no, opposite. Yeah, so that's that's where the problem is going to be is getting through you guys to make that final. Because to be honest with you, everybody on the other side of that bracket does not scare me. Okay. The, yeah, there is an easier side of the bracket. Uh, it, it is like it's a it's a coin flip with Madrid and City, and then. Depending on how how Arsenal shows out in the first game against Bayern, that'll set the tone. Yeah. But if Bayern dominates the first game, they will also dominate the second game, and then vice versa. Arsenal could play well against Bayern, but I don't. I also don't see Arsenal dominating Bayern. Just are they, purely are based they, off. Uh, of the are they at, are they at the Emirates first time or second? Um, based on how this bracket is set up, I would say that they're at the Emirates first. But I could be wrong. I believe the first leg is. That is Emirates first. It's it's always and Ali on second. I I always like playing at home second because if God forbid gets to go to penalty kicks, Mm -hmm. you're in front of your own people, or at least you know how to rally. Um, I mean, look what Barcelona did against PSG that one time where they just absolutely came back and tied. What was it? It was like they were down five one or something. They came back. Uh, Yeah, yeah. That's all right. So. Yeah, if I, if I'm Arsenal, if I'm looking at someone who I would hope to play against, I'd probably go against Dortmund. If you wanna, if you wanna make it to the next round, Dortmund or PSG, I think. Go ahead. I was gonna say even Barcelona, they're not the same team that they've been. No, I, they haven't, and uh, you know they they got you know they got good young players, but the, their youth is just it's just they're not. They're not the Barcelona team that I think a lot of us Madrids grew up hating mm-hmm. in the sense of like just that overall. I mean, look, Lewandowski hasn't been playing that good lately. Uh, Frankie de Jong is practically just there to sit, you know, make a ton of money. Um, you know, the only one who, you know, who's really dangerous is Joao. Um I don't know. I, 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 I don't like Barcelona by any means. I hate them, but I do miss the old Barcelona team that would, you know, rival us. And that's, you know, yep. with, um, you got PK and uh, uh, Julio. Yeah, um, yeah. Javi, uh, Iniesta. I, oh, Iniesta and Javi was unbelievable. I mean, watching them play was, uh, Tiki Taka was. Yeah, that know, was an insane time in football. <laughs> yeah. But when you had you had Tiki Taka against a suicidal attacking Real Madrid team, and yeah. it was just it was it, you know when you you will watch and you go well Madrid lost five nothing how that happened? Oh, it's suicidal attacking soccer the Mourinho, who uh, you know if if Ancelotti wants to leave at any point and Mal wants to come back, I will take him in a heartbeat. That that was that was fun soccer. Um, all right, I, somebody asked. Uh, if Pulisic was back at Chelsea, and you guys said if he was healthy, I still don't think he would start in the starting eleven. Who's starting over him? Who? In, a, in a in a full on left wing role, who's starting over Pulisic in this team right now? I don't know. Ex- There's your answer then. But I, I, are we? But are we talking about when? But but do you feel like Pulisic with his the way he plays, it's still better than what you have? I mean, is it going to make a significant difference? I think he is a slightly less technical Mudrik, but his the game in his mind is simplified more than Mudrik, which helps him. So he can do he doesn't have to do all the stepovers, all the scissors. 
of a Cruyff turns because he's simplified and he can do one shoulder drop, one shimmy, get the guy to move the same as he would with two step overs and then yeah. make that simple pass or, or have the shot and whatnot. Um, I think Sterling, is he's just not it. I'm ready for him to go to Saudi. So there's your two true left wingers and both that, of them are reasons for Pulisic to start over them. That that's a that's a man his fault from the heavens of Sterling. I mean, you know what he's done at Man City and where he is. I mean, uh, I mean, I know this is even a throwback. Even Joe Hart. I mean, that man mm -hmm. literally fell from the heavens. Mm -hmm. And and uh, I mean, so do you feel like certain players like Joe Hart and Sterling and others who were really good? I would even say, um, oh God. <laughs> he played for Chelsea and he went to Roma. I can't remember his name. He was he was he was English. Uh Sammy Abraham? No. Mm -hmm. Kyle Corey. I think he went to Roma or he may have went to Inner. Uh Ashley 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 Cole. Ashley Cole, yeah. Yeah, you know, is it do you feel like that the Premier League is very obviously it's a very physical league. But do you feel like it tends to beat up on young players where the longevity in the league doesn't last as long compared to other leagues. Does that make sense? I don't know if that made sense. Mm -hmm. No, you're, no. You're just saying the physicality and the intenseness of it beats up on a player earlier in their career than it would in any other league. Yeah. It, it, so, so do you feel like for English players, there needs to be... Um, or at least in the league itself, if they want to create the longevity for these young players, especially the English players, um, to I don't want to say dial it down, but but create a more tactical style of play because they they did that in Syria over the years, where it's become very more defensive structure and players are lasting way long, uh, longer. Like um, uh, Javier, uh, mm -hmm. who played, for, he was the captain for Inter. Do you feel like that could be something that could do? Because it, it, it clearly is showing and beating up on the English players specifically. I know that's a loaded question. You can take this one, Kanata. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a very physical league. And then something else that we see in the, in the Premier League that we don't see across is that every team is, quote unquote, honest in how they play. Mm -hmm. um, where people won't, we won't sit back. You don't see the team sit back. Everyone wants to go for the game. Everybody wants to go for that, mm -hmm. that win. So that increases, you know, that physicality that we see. Um, I agree that if we want to see the players be longer lasting and more, you know, have more fruitful careers. Yeah. It's got to, the physicality of the league does have to take a step back and we do need to see that become more technical. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I love it for the physicality, though. I can't lie, you know. No, it, 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 there's nothing wrong with that. I, I, I meant, you know, and, and believe me, it, there's nothing wrong with being physical. There's nothing wrong with being uh, aggressive in the game. No, oh, right. But, you know, it, it, in just some sense that, you know, for the good of English soccer, you know, I, I would definitely say back in the early, mid-2000s, when you had teams going forward past Chelsea, where Chelsea, when they won against, uh, was it Bayern in the finals? Mm -hmm. uh, totally with, right. um, uh, uh, God, the guy from, uh, uh, oh, God, he's huge. He was a huge uh, striker. Why is it missing yeah, my head? Drogba. That was the team that was very tactical, you know, at mm -hmm. the time. And they were able to switch that off going into the Champions League. Yeah, but in the past, when, like, Arsenal and Manchester United, they were they were more physical in the game. But when they go into the Champions League against more tactical teams, they would have yep. some issues. So for your team, like Arsenal, do you feel like that when you go up against Bayern, do you feel like you're going to go play physical against them? Or do you feel like you can play a more tactical approach against them? Well, it's it's going to have to be more tactical. I mean, we're not going to be able to go out there and outmuscle them by any means. They're still a top team. And we saw a struggle with that against a team like Porto um, that wanted to sit back. They were content letting us possess the ball, just not having the creating opportunities. And then they score a banger at home, and it takes us scoring a late goal to send it to penalties. 
we've kind of always struggled that with that. So that's like when we were showing the table, I was looking at it and I'm like, there's two teams here I don't want to play. And that's Atletico and you guys, because both teams are comfortable letting us have the ball in useless spaces, pass the ball around the back line, just not create and then get caught out of position, drive the ball upfield and then do what you guys do best in those moments. So we have to become a more tactical team. I, I can definitely say if you're able to do it is if, if, if Arsenal ever was to play against Madrid, if you were able to box out the midfield and force Tony Kroos and Modric to come on and box them out, I mean, then, I mean, you could really dismantle the entire Madrid because at the end of the day, defensively we're decent, but our main core is in the midfield. And if teams that have beaten us, and like that we have lost against in the league, they've done it by basically strangulating the midfield entirely yeah. and and not necessarily worried about the attack and not worried about the defense. You disrupt our midfield, you you, you have Madrid. And that's, that's always been an Ancelotti thing. Right. Um, I, I No, seriously, wish best of luck to you guys against Bayern. I never like watching Bayern win. But I, I, would, I would say that they're probably – not as dangerous as they used to be, yep. but you know, for Tuchel who who needs to basically win this trophy to, I think, to keep his job. He's already uh, leaving. Is he leaving? I didn't hear that. Yeah, they're okay. like mutually parting ways. Uh, I but know. yeah, no, he, it's it's a European trophy. They they definitely need to perform well. I do yeah. agree. I said it to the guys. A couple of days. Well, even when I saw the draw, if there's a year that I wanted to play them, it's this year. I would agree. I I, I think with what Xavi has done to Leverkusen, and just I mean it's it's unreal. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I know the Liverpool fans are devastated, but he's going to stay. But I I I hope he continues over there because mm-hmm. he's going to. I mean, they haven't lost a game. If you look at the standings, it's 23 and four, 23 wins and four draws. Yep. They haven't lost. That's unbelievable. Did Was the Invincibles, did they draw any games or were this, was it just straight wins? Yeah, no, they drew. Um, overrated. They, all right. <laughs> Highly overrated. But yeah, so we definitely drew as well. I think their wins to draw ratio is actually better. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's incredibly imp- impressive what you know what's going on over there. I'd say it's a ten thousand IQ play by Mikel Arteta to send uh, Jaka over to Leverkusen to bottle uh, Harry Kane on yet another trophy. That okay? So at this point, I think it's Harry Kane. I it's got to be, dude. dude I, I think be. it's Harry Kane. Like low key, I think it's Harry Kane, man. Like he went over to a team that you just like. No, he's gonna win trophies. They just they always win trophies. It's, it's a given. You're gonna win one trophy. <laughs> gonna win and they, they're not gonna do it. That's unbelievable. I think he's cursed. He has to be. <laughs> he can't. Uh, all right, I got, I got, um, I got one more question for, and I'll let you guys go. Uh, so. With with all this happening, and, and with um, I want to make sure I say this right. So with all the Champions League and with all the stuff that's happening in far the English Premier League goes, I think you covered it. But just now that we kind of digested a little bit more, do we still think Liverpool is going to be in first, Arsenal is in second, Man City in third, or do you think Arsenal and Man City could flip? Yes. They could flip. I'm going to stand by. We finish second. Okay. Um, but it's I. It's up in the air between two and three, in my opinion. Okay. All right. No, well, that's it, man. Uh, and oh, and just remember this one. I'll do that again. <laughs> can't look forward. Can't look forward. This is this is a good team. So, but Orlando City is pretty good too. So. Uh, uh, sometimes we're, we're pretty sometimes, good. Sometimes, sometimes we're good, but this is a sometimes good. Sometimes maybe good. <laughs> Miss it. All right. Well, uh, see you in two weeks. And Zach, you best start working on those fan reacts, man. People are starting to get upset. Yeah, I've heard off it. over here, man. I heard the best of it. I'm, 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 I'm totally teasing. Have a good one, boys. Have a good night, buddy. All right. I didn't want you to answer this question when Johnny was in here. Y'all didn't get to it, but. Answer it now. There's, 
there's quite a few players that are going to be putting away that could be putting away goals for us. Um, obviously, the easy shout is Bukayo Saka, um, but then again, we've got Kai Havertz on eight goals in the league. We've got Trossard on seven goals in the league. Odegaard on seven goals in the league. Declan Rice on six goals in the league. Gabby on six goals. You sound like Chelsea from like two years ago. Oh, brother, so we got a people, like average of got, six goals. We have everybody in our starting eleven has scored more than one goal. That sounds like Chelsea, where it's just a bunch of people scoring like eight to two goals every single year. Yeah, so we don't have a huge, you know, top score. We've just got a, t- a bunch of team and players that can create opportunities. Um, we're lethal on set pieces, so that's why. We see Gabrielle with four goals on the in the league. Like, it's not. We don't have a problem creating opportunities. When we what we have a problem doing sometimes is finishing those opportunities. Yeah, I guess that is what the question is alluding to: is who's that guy that can finish it no matter what the situation is? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I got a back soccer on twenty-one goals and assists in the year. Odegaard on thirteen goals and assists in the year. Those are two guys that on an, in a half chance can create that class and score those goals that's fair just uh don't be like whoever this is hi goodbye it's just <laughs> well done um don't know how to how to respond <laughs> to the bot but here we are um I had a question for you, and then I fully forgot what... Oh, no, it actually wasn't for you. I'm sorry. I was going to no. see if HR was still in here, and then I that, what I forgot was I was going to give him a hard time about something, but I forgot what the thing that I was going to give him a hard time about, about was. Yes. <laughs> in the meantime, Owen keeps typing on his phone. If Arsenal plays the best they play this season, the they I'm guessing the season the best... Buy- Brother, go back to English class. But if Arsenal plays, spelled wrong, the best they, they forgot the apostrophe and they've played this season, the best oh, Bayern wait. is incorrect. They beat Bayern. If they if we play the best we have this season, we beat, beat Bayern. Bayern. If they play like they did against City, they lose. Um, so the thing about that City game was is that it was about getting out of there with points at all costs because of how close the title race is. We weren't overextending and trying to really create opportunities. It was more about making sure Erling Holland still has zero goals on Gabrielle and Saliba and their six matches against each other. You know, it was about making sure KDB gets pulled out of that game early because he's not doing anything. Like that, that was the priority of that game. HR is here. It definitely didn't make sense, but the two brain cells that are between the four of us were here today. So fortunately, it got through. Uh, HR says, being placed above your club with half the price. (laughs) This drink has been empty for like the last hour, and you are the reason that it has to be filled up again. And it hasn't been, unfortunately. But I did remember what I was going to give you a hard time about. And it wasn't really giving you a hard time about something, but it was another HR situation that has popped up within the last 10 to 12 hours. So if you were able to hop in, you can hop in. If not, chat is fine and we can figure it out. But I'm trying to figure out what the HR situation is. Uh, closer. It does. It's not even, it is the last 10 or so hours, but it is uh-huh. actually within like the last, um, Two, I would say. Two to three. <laughs> Who's false in IDs again? It, 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 the situation is actually rocked. about the same, man. So, if you're able to hop in, feel free. If not, I'd just uh, always beat you in Mario Kart, so it's fine. But, please, dear Lord, you can't this man can't spell either. He's trying to say flashing, and twice it's come across as false. Come across as falsing and flacing. Flacing. (laughs) 
Um, do I still have this up? I do still have this up. I want you. Yeah, I'm just not even going to. This for you. You can fill out the bracket and pick your winner unbiasedly. Unbiasedly. Let's go ahead and fill it out. All right. Start, start from the top. I say Madrid goes through there. PSG I and Barcelona. PSG is going to go through there. Mm. Uh, this is the unbiased one. Unbiased, I think we go through. Ooh, interesting. Uh, Madrid goes through. Uh, we go back to the top. I got to check something real quick. I haven't seen how well PSG has been doing this year in general. Uh, they're definitely winning league. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I just mean European wise as well to kind of see above average at best. So 2 1, 2 0, no. Sociedad. There's just no need for the SAS here, HR. There really isn't. Um. Yeah, so I'm going to go PSG through there. They're getting through then, the bus. No, I'm going to say Madrid goes through there. Oh, unbiased. Mm. No, no, no. I, I'm sorry for the bottom. Fair, but but you could have another Madrid v Madrid final. It very well could be. It just you know I don't think Dortmund's going to be able to do enough to get through the bus. I think PSG mm. has a light, more likely chance of breaking that down than Dortmund. I just don't know how much Atletico is going to score. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was going to say you. Wow, we... no, what was I going to say? I don't even know what I was going to say. I lost my train of thought. But yeah, if that's the final, then obviously I say Madrid wins Champions League. It's the battle for Mbappe. <laughs> um, oh, what's your bracket, bud? That is a great question because I don't. I well, let's refresh it. <laughs> um. Mm, okay. Okay. <laughs> Do I even let? I can I, I can't even redo it. <laughs> well, I'll figure it out one day, and then uh, we'll bring. Hold on, wait, 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 I gotta turn names on so the people can see it. Um, uh, how do I do that? What's up? What up, guys? <laughs> Not media still there. <laughs> yeah, y'all hear me all right? Yeah, it sounds good. All right, cool, cool. All right. So, so who's flashing IDs? Flashing, fl fishing, flazing. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is no problem with identification this time. Um, but it is identifying a common theme that we have had in the last week on Monday. This certain person was not there for the podcast, and then he also confirmed that he would be here for the stream tonight, and he has not shown up. And if you listen to the podcast, you would know who that man is. Don't know if you listen to the pod yet, but... is he? Uh, does he have a significant other that he may be uh, spending his time with? Possibly. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's one of those things, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's easy to snipe from a mile away. Right, but if know. but if you do confirm that you are going to be at said thing. Oh yeah. But then you you just you ghost and you don't say, Oh, I can't make it. Yeah. I don't know. You know, that's strike number two, doxing your buddies and then now just ditching them. I don't know. I mean, if we're saying ditching, then we're on like strike 14 at this point. <laughs> All I'm going to say is I feel like at this point, I'm the only one left on the island. Whoa, 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 whoa. Didn't you I, get voted off the same episode figured, Bryce got voted off? No, I figured out how to swim and then I came back. <laughs> I don't know. Bryce doesn't happen to have like some, you know, pink 
par uh, apparel in his closet by chance, does he? Supporting maybe a, a Pepto Bismol FC oh. or something. Maybe that's yeah. what he's trying to hide from you guys. Maybe he has to, you know, he's he's too ashamed. Switch, switch sides. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's too, it, it, he had to rock the messy jersey too deep. He has to, you know, hide it from you guys now. I was gonna say, I mean, he's a Chelsea fan, so he's clearly a glory chaser. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta follow the London club. It's just too easy. It's just too easy. <laughs> I don't know if I know the story. I, I need the history on on whether it's a legitimate reason why you support Chelsea or not. Wasn't it because like a FIFA club you randomized or something like that? Wasn't that a story where what's the story behind it? Is there a, okay. go a good reason? I will not tolerate the disrespect. The, the so real story. Your story. My, no, let's hear it. The real story is, back in like, oh dear lord, it was like second or third grade. There, there was a girl that supported Chelsea, and you know, me being the player that I am, I was like, all right, yeah, Chelsea, I know, <laughs> I know Gianfranco Zola, you know, all these players, but I had no clue back at that point because it was second or third grade, and then I stuck with it, and it's become the club that puts me through heartbreak and brings me joy so it's been a good what am i uh it's been a good uh 15 years <laughs> and did you happen to date this young lady but no i was in third grade <laughs> second grade <laughs> you go to impress a girl by picking some random english club and decide you know what yep this is what i'm gonna do for the rest of my life support them <laughs> Here, and I could have picked Real Madrid, and little did I know my life would have been much better. But no, yeah, yeah. there's much easier paths in life. Trust me. I, I mean, I inherited Villa from my wife, and then you know we're fifth generation oh. now, and so that that I'm stuck with it. So I had no choice. But you know, for somebody like you who kind of just picked it on a fly, man, I don't know. You should have hop shipped earlier. Did you happen to date this female? Oh yeah, she's my wife. Yeah, that, that was the joke because you said that was your wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, now yeah, and then I'm on board here, and then, <laughs> and then my daughter is now. Yeah, now my daughter's indoctrinated too. So it, it's just we're stuck with it. It's an endless cycle, man. It's an mm -hmm. endless cycle. Pain and just mediocrity, hope, and then just just decimated into just middle table. What's the best quote Let's... of all time from Ted Lasso? No, it's what? the hope that kills you. I hope that kills yeah. you. Yeah. That's I, the one. Say, I say to my girlfriend all the time because she came in at Orlando City's peak and it's just like uh -huh. yeah, the, the, the first 10 games of this year I've been like, yeah, this is what it's like. I'm, yep. I'm sorry I made you an Orlando City fan. Here, this, is, and here, this is life. Here we are again. Yep, yep, exactly. The, the, the pain of just like just such great potential at least with villa the thing is is like you don't really expect that because i didn't live through the glory years as you know i joked in the 82 83 year when we won <laughs> europe but uh obviously i wasn't around for that but uh i became a villa fan and really supported when they were in championship was just absolute madness because watching championship football is just absolute craziness so going in through the playoff finals getting promoted barely staying alive getting mid table getting to europe and now potentially punching way above our weight and getting UCL. It's been a, a fun, you know, five or six years. Uh, just based off that answer and you giving me the brief history of everything that you've gone through with Villa, I'm changing my answer to you guys in fifth. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm telling you, I think the, we still have a, a decent chance with the coefficient. You know, if, if Arsenal could do what they're supposed to do against Byron, I'm... I think EPL will get the fifth spot. I think... I think Syria all locked in one, and I think there's a second uh, spot that will go to either EPL or Bundesliga right now. I was going to say, right. if Leverkusen goes through and wins the Europa League, though, that probably boosts the Bundesliga up to... Yeah, well, I mean, and also, we kind of hold a little bit of our own destiny in that sense because we're in the Europa Conference League, too, right? So if we make it through and win that out, that'll help with the coefficient, too. So, I mean, I don't know all the math. Yeah, Liverpool, yep. Yeah. Yeah, and then cool. you still got City and Arsenal in the Champions yeah. League. Yeah, which I was saying in the chat is a bummer because they're on the both the the same side of the yep. bracket, which kind of hurts that for our, that fifth spot. Because I I really don't trust ourselves against Tottenham because Tottenham has nothing but the league, so you know they get to focus 100 percent on that. Which I don't know. Okay, they have been cereal bottlers for the last 98 years. <laughs> like we were like uh like was being mentioned earlier, Harry Kane's gone though. So you know I don't know maybe that was it. Yeah, they still got the little cock and ball on their 
on their badge. So I don't think there's much we can do to change that. <laughs> as long as it's not Man U. I hate Man U. I, I was telling my wife earlier, I was because I didn't, mi I missed the Chelsea match. And so uh, yeah, I know. My, my, uh, my uh, father in law texted me about it. And so I pulled up the highlights. We were watching it. And I was like, man, Bruno Fernandez, I absolutely hate that man. What that is one of my least what favorite. A prick. Players. I hate, hate that him. guy. Hate him he's, so much. He cries over everything. He fouls someone. And he's like, "Oh, it's not a foul." And then he gets a finger poked in his back, and he flops and starts crying. Everything yeah, we roll around for twenty minutes, Ooh. and then we get up and. Yeah. But, but but he never gets simulation. He's like the Neymar of the EPL, and it's atro yeah. it's atrocious to watch. It's not fun. He's terrible. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's Man U, and I just hate Man U. I just don't yeah, like Man U. And then he scores an absolute sitter of a header, and he's like, mm -hmm. I don't want to talk about him. him. And that, that ball to him was beautiful. Oh, I mean, I was with that, and then Anthony's bat ball was just absolutely world class. Yeah, it was his first assist of the season. Woo yeah, finally, yeah, finally. I mean, it was a I pretty was one. Say the, yeah. the, the fidget spinner hit the ball the right way. <laughs> well, I, I can make some bad jokes about him, but we'll we'll keep that off uh, off the yeah. screen. <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll, leave, we'll leave those in the draft. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I uh, we I asked the question um about the EPL top uh top eight. Give me a uh, give me your bottom three. Who's going down? It's I mean it's kind of easy. I mean there's pretty much two automatics, but there's that third that I don't know. If you got if you got the table up, go ahead pull it up. Let's see what you guys think real quick. Let me add it in. There you go. Yep. Sheffield's gone. I mean, they're they're yeah, just not I'm even trying at this yeah. point. I mean, a goal differential of negative fifty-two. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guys. Do they do they even play football at this point? I don't think so. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, and Burnley's had a boom. tough go at it. Yep. What? Okay, sorry. I'm gonna pull the table away for a second. I want to see Luton's remaining matches. Luton are a fun club to watch. I mean, not mm -hmm. only because of their stadium, but actually they they put up a battle against everybody they play. I yeah, they go out there and fight. They do. Unfortunately, though, they're losing to Bournemouth. They're losing to City. Draw or loss against Brentford. Probably a loss against Wolves. Ever that's a that's actually a that's, massive match. Luton Everton. Yeah, that's a that's a six pointer right there. Yeah. Uh, West Ham. They're losing to West Ham. They're probably losing to Fulham, and that's it. So they they have like two points left, realistically. Uh where's Bournemouth is in twelfth? Yeah, I don't know. I'd like Loon. I would actually love to see Everton go down, but I don't know. It would be an absolute travesty too because they got deducted points and then all of a sudden get relegated on top of it as well. It would be absolutely hilarious. And Forest had four points taken away from them too, so they're three points above safety. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Three points in goal differential, technically. Yeah, they've got a tough go, too, though. They've got Tottenham on the weekend, and then they've got City a couple of weeks after that. For for me, I'm saying it stays the same. Bottom three. Really? Yeah. I. Ah. Realistically, yeah. it stays the same. Would I like to see Luton stay up and, and Forrest go back down? Only because of how they've how wrong they've gotten that squad. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. probably... Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. And then uh, last question, and I'll let you boys go. Uh, CONCACAF Champions Cup, obviously, you know, I may or may not have put a bet in on a certain purple team to win the whole thing. Oh, you're the reason. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm not, I'm not going to say, you know, I, I found hard rock at a, a weird time in my life, but I did. And I'm, I may have not just yeeted some money off the face of the earth, but it is what it is. But, uh, I mean, it was a rough showing this week for MLS clubs. You think, uh, you think we see anybody pull a Seattle and win the whole thing? No. Yeah. No. I mean... I think the it was the New England coach that said it. It's like playing a team of eleven DPS when you get to this point in the co in the competition and the quality of the opponent that you're going up against. It's we shoot ourselves in the foot with our own stupid re re regulations, and yep. until those go, we will have no chance of being competitive in these national yeah, competitions. Yeah. You said it best. We shoot ourselves in the foot. The the DP contracts. Tam, Gam, U22 initiative. Just set at this point. Just set a salary cap. 
even if it's i mean it's going to be lower than what the mexican league has or especially with ffp and everything but just let teams bring in players because then the quality of the league gets better yes you might have disparity from like more disparity than you would right now from the bottom of the league to the top but it just brings in higher quality because then people still want to go watch the top teams play and then you just have battles at the top that you really want to go watch instead of it's just being like oh uh colorado's doing well i like i can't name three players that play for colorado and i just know that chris armis is managing them and somehow they're i don't even know if they're doing well to be honest but it, it brings more attention to the league and it would just be better yeah i agree with you and i mean i think you guys may have mentioned this before i mean but tigris is still like light years ahead of us from a salary perspective right like mm -hmm. they're just highest north america by a long shot i was trying to find it real quick i couldn't find anything on it but yeah i agree with you i mean i think inner miami had a shot at it as trash as it pepto bismol fc is yeah but with messi being injured and such now red card carried into the away match i don't know but I, w I personally wanted them to keep going just so they had more matches on their legs, uh, but it is what it is, so we'll see. Yeah, if there was a trophy they were going to win this year, it had to be this one, it feels like, because yep. come the end of the season, we're going to start seeing less and less of them playing, less and less of the Barca boys being in the squad. So Yep, yep. 100% agree. I think this was a, a good shot for them, and then obviously the, the handheld Leagues Cup and all of that mess. Um, so I don't think they're going to get uh, either the Supporter Shield or the MLS Cup either. I agree with you on that one. All right, boys. Well, I appreciate you having me on. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to talking more EPL. I don't, I don't get the opportunity to do that too often, so excited about it. And, you know, launching myself off of Rainbow Road whenever we get the chance. So, <laughs> Yeah, we'll keep you posted, man, because it's going to be – it'll be a good time playing with everybody. For sure. We, appreciate it, guys. We do, oh, we, do need, we do need a final decision on the punishment for uh a certain someone i don't know i mean as a married man i get i give a little grace on this one i mean <laughs> just, so I, I understand that but uh i mean flashing somebody's id on a uh on a stream probably was a, a rank above so i give him grace on this strike maybe but that last one that was a straight red so i'm giving him a yell on this one there we go Fair Fair yellow and a red card on bryce's book now <laughs> yeah <laughs> All right, guys. Take it easy. Have a good night. Appreciate you. you. Oh, nice. Turn the camera off. Didn't leave the stream. Well, your there you go. <laughs> Not to remove themselves. They can do it. Oh, I. Why was chat closed? Interesting. Didn't realize that. Um, what did we miss? Uh, Bruno equals asshole. Absolutely, agree with that. That's the first thing I can agree with Owen on. <laughs> Yeah, it was a uh, universal. Imagine Arsenal win the league and Villa go to the UCL. Imagine. Yeah, that's what you're gonna have to do. <laughs> like I'm, I'm very proud of how far my teams come, but I'm also realistic, and they've hurt me for so long that you know it's kind of hard to look past that. Yeah. Um. We're definitely closer than we've ever been, but we're still not there yet. Like I said earlier, we need that number nine, somebody that can score when we need him to in those big moments. I can't remember uh, what club it was, but there was someone who just like came out of the blue that someone was going to go after Ivan Tony, and it was like a big bid, and it wasn't Arsenal or Chelsea. It's it was. I feel like I remember seeing this. Was it? I don't think it was Liverpool because they've got. No, it wasn't Liverpool. Oh, let's look at it. Mm, maybe West Ham. Why you know, I was gonna, I was gonna say West Ham, but yes, they're gonna use their Declan Rice money. It's true. They very well could do that, and I, I mean, that's not a bad pickup for them at all. Man, you. I don't think it was. No, because they just got Hoyland. I that wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't doubt them putting their nose in something, but I mean, if I'm if I'm Ivan Tony, I'm not going to United. I'd rather go to the Ham United over there. Um, boom, 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 boom. Johnny, 
boys with his <laughs> shame, shame, shameful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have been live for two hours. I think we are going to wrap this one up here. Um, we appreciate everyone that has joined, whether in chat or the StreamYard link. Um, we should be back next Thursday, most likely, and maybe this weekend, depending on how things go. Um, other than that, I will let Kanata wrap up the live. Yeah, thank you guys, like Zach said, for hopping in here. This is always fun to talk with everybody and just chat about random stuff. If you like what you saw here, then go ahead and hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell because that's how you'll know when we be live. You know, doesn't doesn't do any harm. Just just do it. If the notification annoys you, swipe it away or click it and join <laughs> us. But you know, yeah, I was gonna say it goes away. It's it's okay. You'll be fine. Uh, yeah. Check us out on Patreon. We, we dropped it earlier. We do a whole bunch of different type of content on there. And we post semi-regularly. So please make sure that you hit that and check it out. And at least give it a try. If you don't like it, well, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, other than that, come on, you gunners. Let's do the thing. Orlando City, get your shit together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I have to agree on that second one, though. Not the first. Never the first. Yeah, I don't blame you. I can't support <laughs> you all either. So <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> all, right, all right. We appreciate everybody. Have a good night. See ya. Have a good one, guys.